What's up guys, Ben here and welcome to Motivation to Invest. Celebrities are famous for their loyal fan base, high income and big spending lifestyles. But for many of them, this can be their downfall. As Biggie Smalls used to say, more money can equal more problems. However, there is an exception to this rule. Whereas most hip hop artists choose to flex and stunt by spending massive amounts of their cash on chains, cars, and even jets, some other hip hop artists choose to invest that money first into businesses and projects and then spend the interest on chains, cars, and jets. Most notably is P Diddy, the king of hip hop. He sold over 12 million albums worldwide, including five platinum plaques and 10 gold albums. Forbes estimates PD's net worth to be $820 million. Now there have been many hip hop artists who have sold more albums than P Diddy, but have a lower net worth. For example, Eminem is the best selling hip hop artist of all time, with worldwide album sales and singles at over 100 million, which granted him 50 platinum albums and 10 number ones. However, Eminem only has a net worth of $210 million, whereas P Diddy has a net worth of over $820 million as he fast approaches the billionaires club. So why is this? Well, the main reason is that P Diddy is not just a fantastic hip hop artist. He's also an amazing entrepreneur and an incredible investor. So in this video, we're going to reveal P Diddy's top 10 investing tips he learned from the legendary Ray Dalio. So without further ado, let's dive in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah, flex, I just want to win. Welcome back guys to Motivation to Invest. Before we get started, go ahead, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That allows us to continue creating more great content like this for you guys. In addition, if you would like more investing tips and exclusive stock market picks, which I personally have invested into, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel. Be sure to turn the notification bell on. That way you'll get notified when I release future stock picks. With that being said, let's get into the video. My brother. How you doing, Sean? <laughs> good oh, to see you, man. man. So good to see you. Nice to see you. How you been? I'm good. How you been? I'm doing great. I'm looking good. Good. You're looking yeah. fit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. Conversation with you about the principles. What does can't stop, won't stop mean <laughs> in terms of your culture? Tell me about the culture you want. Yeah. Um. Just from, you know, where I come from, there's so many times that you actually want to quit, you know, where the odds are so much against you that, you know, you feel like you may want to stop or, or pick a easier path or road and can't stop, won't stop is something that I, I came up with in my music. I would drop these positive messages like when I would be doing ad libs on songs, and it it was, it's it's my movement, it's that it's that, you know, no matter what, if you get knocked down ten times, get up eleven. Got to a point where I I was having so much success, in so many different areas, and so I wasn't paying attention to making sure that the that I was still nurturing, the team, and then when I had to come back off a tour and I had to get back in the business mode, you know, I realized that, you know, I had outgrew my team. It wasn't like they were bad. It's just that they weren't at the level of excellence that I was at. That, that level of excellence is very, very high for me. What's interesting to me is um, I've, I've seen this uh, happen over and over again with all different people. Um, and I've, we've had conversations with people who run great sports teams or people who run um, great teams in any way and have that element of excellence. And if you don't have great talent around you, first of all, it's not a kick. It's a pain. 
it's miserable because then you know you're just slogging along. And what what's the kick? The the oh. kick, the fun. Oh, the fun. Okay, All right. the, the fun, the joy. Yeah. Okay, it is a blast, a blast to be around great people. Yes, and it is a downer to have people who can't That's play that I'm way. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying too. Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying it's a kick, like whether if, if somebody's, my dad was a jazz musician, so I think of jazz, you know? Mm. And I think like, wow, great jazz musicians, I listen to great jazz, ooh, and I listen to that and I say, yeah. wow, okay? Yeah. Or a ba great basketball team or any other group of people to play that basketball, you use that as an example, to play that around is a kick, okay? And, it's, and it drags you down if you can't do that. You wanna go to this, new high level, right? And you want to do a lot of things. And in order to do the lot of things, you're going to have to get the most leverage of other people. But you also want it to be great, just like you want it to be, because you've got a unique ability with your taste and everything to be able to make those choices so you know what's great and what's not great. So in order to go from that, you have to pe pick the people who can do that, who can deliver you what you could do to find people who are, are as good or better than you. Mission of radically open-minded. Um, is to simultaneously have an opinion, like, uh, like it, let me give you this, that you think it should go this way. Yes. And then you say to yourself, how do I know I'm right? Maybe that's wrong. Is that as good as I can be? And then the capacity to hear and then challenge. So somebody comes up to you with an idea and says, okay, let's do this, what do you think about that? To harvest the best around you, but sorting it with your own mind. So I say to be open-minded and assertive at the same time. Don't give up your assertiveness, but to be curious, like am I harvesting the best? Because the biggest thing that most people have, uh, their problem, is they get so opinionated that they can't take in. And the worst problem is the worst tragedy of man, kind, almost any individual, is that they're attached to opinions that are wrong and they don't want to have them stress tested. So when you're op radically open-minded, you can say, hey man, I really think it should go this way. And then at the same time say to the smartest people that you know, kick the shit out of it and try to say, okay, now let's see how the stress tests so that I can then go to the best or how do I harvest. The way, just because you don't know what the way is doesn't mean there's always a way you got to keep looking yeah. at. These things echo because not only have I learned that, but I, I find that almost everybody who is successful has learned this. Like my own mantra is dreams plus reality plus determination equals a so successful life. One day we came up with this with this this quote and it's original quote and it's it's um don't be afraid to close your eyes and dream but then open your eyes and see <laughs> that's it so that's an original sean combs uncle shrimp oh I it's it <laughs> and it's like don't be afraid to close your eyes and dream but then open your eyes and see if the reality of what it's going to take no matter how insurmountable it may look leverage. The key is to try to find out what you're not good at. Okay. Write those things down that you're not good at. And then you get the people who are good at those things. And then you get the great leverage, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, think, what are you not good at? And get that great leverage and then get the simpatico, even on the things you're good at. As I've been building, I've been fooled a couple of times. I've written out a very detailed spec sheet. Um, they may say they understand it, but then when, and, and they have given me the appearance that, that, that they um, understand the job and, and they, they do a stellar interview, but then, you know, when we, we're three months into it, into the trenches. Yeah, I, I don't think, you, yeah, here's the deal. What you do is um, you use the personality profile testing, uh, background checks, and the resume. And I do a thing which you call a reverse 360. So to find out uh, not just their resumes, but to find out everybody who knew them in the past, and then you go and do the checking. So you have to start with a spec sheet, meaning um, not just the skills. There are three okay. things that uh, everybody brings you. Um, skills is what almost everybody hires for, and it's the least important of the three things. The most important things are values, abilities, and skills. So first, what are their values? 
because if you're not values aligned, you're going to have a problem. Like, how are you going to be with each other? The second thing is then abilities. Like, like some people like you, a very creative thinker. Somebody may be very reliable. They're not creative. But each person has a natural ability and abilities that they've gone to develop. Those are the things that make you excel or worse, bad at things. And then you have skills. And skills is like, a, uh, you know, okay, you can play the piano or you can sing or you can do that. So each per that's learned. But if you t start to look at, okay, what are the person's values? Where's that coming from? Well, we're going to have simpatico. Because at that deep level, you have to have that simpatico. You're on a mission together. It's not just a job, yes, yes. right? And then their ability. So you got to get the spec sheet right. Once you know the language and you've got it down, then they come and they meet you, and then you you do those kind of right tests, and then you and then view when when you're starting with them that the tests don't end, okay? Because you're 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 testing them every single day, and it's how you do that, and even being able to rely on others to even make those selections for you, um, you know. Sometimes because I've done this a lot. I will look at those particular results and I can say, okay, that's that type of person. And is that type of person a good click with the job? I was raised in Harlem. My, my, my father was killed when I was two, almost three years old. And then my mother, you know, she, she had to figure it out and, and take over. She started working four jobs and that's where I really learned my work ethic from. I, I would watch my mother get up in the morning. She would dr drive a school bus. Then she would go and work in a clothing store. Then she would go back, drive the school bus, come home and feed us. Then she worked with the United Cerebral Palsy and she was a caretaker. And I, I never saw her sleep, you know? And it was just, it was just incredible. So when I was at the age of 12 years old, I wanted to step up. You've got it. You, you reflect, you've got humility, and you've gone through experiences and all the, you know, pain plus reflection equals yeah. progress, that, that's a hero. Is, um, who are some of the leaders that you look up to and why? One guy who comes to mind is Muhammad Yunus. Muhammad Yunus is the man who invented microfinance and is changing. Um, Jeff Canada. Jeff Canada, Harlem Children's Home. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's a shaper. Yes, okay? he definitely is. He's a shaper, and he can make it. And a disruptor. A, and a disruptor, and a smart, good yes, man. Yes, yeah, so yes. So Jeff Canada is 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 one of those. And let me say something else also. We're at a time where, um, is it great to be successful? Is it great to be a millionaire yeah. is it great to be a billionaire yeah okay we want to convey those things to people you can have character at any level of operating so the people that i admire the most are these people who you know they have the great character and um and they're giving to other people those are the people but they're so a lot of names come to mind when you're asking me that question That's you good. know explain t to me one more time why you wrote this book and why it's so important to your legacy i think there are three phases in one's life the first phase is you're dependent on others in your learning and you graduate then you go in the second phase of your life and increasingly people are dependent on you and you're working and you're trying to be successful. I'm in transition from the end of that phase to the next phase in my life, and the most important thing for me is to help other people be successful. I learned along the way certain things that helped me be successful. So whatever success I've had has not been because of me. It's because of principles that I learn along the way, but you know, you have the collection kind of late in life, and you want to pass, so I wanted to pass those along to be able to, you know, I'm at the stage of my life. Yeah. I'm 70 years old. Yeah. I want to pass along what's been good for me. So that's what I want to do. And then when I do that, I can have peace. So when I look at it, and I and I know, like, uh, what the it reverberates. Not only am I helping you because it, it's such an important thing to be not only helping you, but to help the others that you're trying to help 
it reverberates and I feel good. Can we get a round of applause for Ray Dalio? And you. Which of Ray Dalio's tips for success resonate the most with you? I would love to know your thoughts, so please comment your favorite below. I aim to reply to every single comment. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, smash that like button, and definitely subscribe. See you next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah. Flex, I just wanna win. Yeah, LA BB, who we running with? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, coming in, yeah. Flex, I just wanna win. Yeah.